Hey guys, what's going on? It's very nice to have you back. So we are December 30th of 2017, which means that the new year is just around the corner. Now with the new year, there's going to be a lot of new videos, series, and courses. And the very next one that I'd like us to look into would be the React library. So I'm going to be making a series on React. It's basically going to be a course on the React basics, including you know managing state, passing props, building components, things of that nature. So we're going to build an application similar to the following one. So here we got basically a countdown timer that calculates the number of days, hours, minutes, and seconds until the new year. Now you can also see that we got a few controls right there. We got a stop button as well as a resume button. Basically, you can stop it. That's going to stop the timer. And of course, if you click on resume, that's going to resume the flow of the countdown timer. Now the other thing I think we're going to do is we're also going to add an input field with a date time picker so that you'll be able to actually select a custom date. And that's gonna be pretty useful. Back to this page. So as you can see here, I am on reactjs.org and that's the official website for the React library. And perhaps the best explanation for what React or React.js is can be found on the official website. So the website here states that React is basically a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. Now notice that it doesn't say that React is a framework. In fact, even though we often put React alongside other frameworks like Angular, Vue, or Amber, React really, as you're going to see, is more of a library rather than a framework. Now before we get into that, first of all, some of the features of React.js is that it's first of all declarative, meaning that React in itself abstracts a lot of common functionality that you typically have to do yourself using pure JavaScript. So here we're talking about making your pages dynamic, things like you know gathering input from your users, validating input, things of that nature. A lot of that is already abstracted by the library itself, and so it provides you a lot of useful functionality that you can use in your projects so that you don't have to repeat the same logic again and again. And the other thing is that because React uses what's known as a virtual DOM, the library will only update those parts or those segments of your web page that have actually been updated in terms of state or data. And of course, we're gonna get into more detail about that throughout the series. The other feature is that React is also component-based. Basically, the philosophy behind React is that your UI or user interface basically built up from smaller, reusable and maintainable chunks or what's known in React as components. And this is the same philosophy that eventually Angular adopted in its version 2. Components are basically building blocks of your UI. Essentially, they house the HTML, the styles, as well as the behavior that's associated with that specific component or element. And when you break down your application into smaller segments, that basically makes your application or website more manageable and more maintainable. And last but not least, React is also portable. What that means is that React can be easily imported into an existing project. So let's say you already have a legacy application that you want to upgrade. You can plug in React pretty easily and you can only use those elements or components that you wish. So you don't have to rebuild or rewrite the whole thing. And of course, it's pretty useful for new applications as well. And React can be used for multi-page applications or it can be used for single page applications or SBAs. And of course, with React Native, React can also be used for mobile or native mobile applications and progressive web apps. So that's one of the other advantages. Now a few things about React history. So React was first uh, deployed or released on Facebook.com in 2011. It was then adopted by Instagram in 2012. And shortly after that, React was also open sourced in 2013. So between those four years, we're actually pretty much at the end of 2017. There's been quite some time and the React community has been growing and growing. There's been a lot of different frameworks and projects and repositories on GitHub. So at this point, it's fair to say that React is a very mature framework that's um, suitable for production level applications of various scale and size. In fact, if you look at GitHub, you can see that React is one of the most popular repositories by the number of stars. You can also see that Vue.js is sort of like a little bit behind, but still catching up pretty quickly. And then if you go to the second page, you're gonna see Angular 1 right there which by now is pretty much deprecated, but that's a different story. And the very last thing I'd like to mention is recently, actually in September this year, Facebook announced that it was going to relicense its React library from BSD 
to MIT license. And it's really good for us as a community of developers because it means that there's going to be less concerns when it comes to licensing our applications. And in fact, not only did Facebook mention that its React library is going to be updated, but also some of the other projects, including the Chest testing framework, as well as Immutable JS. And lastly, a few notes that I wanted to mention about React. Like I said, React is pretty mature. It's been around for quite some time. And the community has developed quite a big ecosystem around React. So there's a lot of different UI frameworks, including Material UI, and as well as Bootstrap UI. There's really a lot of them. Of course, as you would expect, there's also React Router, which is a library that's used for navigation. Besides, we also have libraries that aid us in managing data as well as state. So things like Flux, Redux, and Reflux. And last but not least, also testing. So there's two big players. One of them is Jest. That's a testing framework developed by Facebook. And then there's also another one developed by Airbnb that's known as Enzyme. And of course, as usual, you have your other you know, testing frameworks and utility libraries like Mocha, Chai, Jasmine, Karma. There's really a lot of different choices that you could consider. So that's pretty much it for the introduction. Let's move on to installation now.